The day after Aljamain Sterling won the UFC bantamweight title, some of his friends took a picture with the champ wearing his belt and posted it on social media. Shortly after, Sterling received a lot of criticism from the fans and even from UFC fighters. In a recent interview with ESPN's Brett Akamato, Aljamain Sterling responded to the criticism, saying it wasn't his fault that his friends wanted to celebrate the win. Check out the clip. It, it's bizarre because the people who are upset about it are acting as if I did something wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. And then if I say that, then it's, well, you shouldn't be celebrating. Well, I'm like, well, I'm not celebrating. My friends are celebrating that they're here with me right now and they want me to enjoy the moment. I'm sorry that that offends people. And, uh, you know, I don't want to celebrate it in terms of holding the bell and doing all this stuff. I'm not, I'm not doing that, you know? But uh, I don't mind taking a few pictures with my friends if that's what they want. You know, if that's going to make them feel like whatever, you know, they're telling me I'm the champ. But, you know, I still feel like I, I need to get back in there and uh, do things over to really figure this out. You know, so that's where I'm at right now. Uh, I can't fault my friends for being excited and wanting to take a picture. You know, I, te I technically made history on someone's mistake and disqualification you know uh rules are there for a reason and uh i'm not saying i should have won the belt from a disqualification but i don't think he should be able to keep it either you know so the guy how do you become a world champion and not know the rules how do you not be able to keep a frame on your opponent step and look around the, the excuses for why he did it makes no sense This past Sunday, Dan Hardy confirmed on Twitter that he is no longer directly working for the UFC. On Wednesday, he took to Instagram and released a statement on his departure from the UFC. In his post, he explained more of the details surrounding his confrontation with the UFC employee, which he said took place after the UFC Fight Island 7 in January. Check out the statement. Apologies for my silence on this current situation. I'm still chasing answers privately, and it's taking some time. This is what I can say at this point. It was a verbal disagreement between myself and a member of the UFC staff. It was forthright, but not aggressive, and specific to work. I've apologized to the individual for the embarrassment they must have felt, as a small handful of our colleagues from the British media were present. We were taking a brief break from recording UFC 258 content a few hours after the Holloway Qatar event had concluded when the disagreement occurred. The conversation could have definitely taken place in a better location and under better circumstances. BT Sport have not fired me and are still keen on working with me in some capacity. I'm appreciative of their interest in a continued collaboration. Thank you all for the support in the comments across their accounts. They are paying attention and making efforts, although th there is pressure to put me out entirely. It has been suggested that a reconciliation between myself and the UFC is possible, and of course, I hope that is the case. I have yet to speak to or hear from Dana, 
and get a better understanding of his perspective on the situation. You can find the full statement on fullreptile.news. According to a new report from the Sports Business Journal, UFC 259 sold 600,000 pay-per-views on ESPN Plus in the United States, plus another 200,000 international pay-per-views for a grand total of 800,000 pay-per-views sold. When Adesanya headlined UFC 253 against Paulo Costa last fall, 700,000 worldwide pay-per-views were sold. It appears that UFC 259 is now Adesanya's biggest pay-per-view seller since he started headlining UFC events. While 800,000 is a solid number overall, it still pales in comparison to UFC 257 in January, which reportedly sold 1.6 million pay-per-views worldwide. Speaking to BT Sports' Caroline Pierce, Dana White said he believes that Conor McGregor was not focused on Dustin Poirier in January and discussed the trilogy bout between the two. And talking of Poirier, Poirier and Conor, it seems that they want that trilogy. They want the rubber match. Um, looking at maybe the summer, summertime for that fight. Yeah. yeah. What has to happen for that? You said that Poirier, you know, getting the deal done was important to Poirier, but it has to be the right deal. I don't, I'm not asking what money he's asking for, but what what is he wanting to, to agree to that fight? He has a deal. Right. <laughs> Poirier okay. has a deal. Okay. He did his deal before the Conor fight. And, and it was, you know, the deal was done with the what if Poirier wins and what if Connor wins. So right. he's got a deal. Have you spoken to Connor since that fight? Um, yeah, yeah, Connor and I have talked. Yeah. yeah. And what do no, you I don't think that the, 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 you know, there has to be trash talk or any of that stuff. I think that, uh, you know, and I don't know if this, if this is true. Mm. I mean, only Connor can answer this question. I, I, I think Connor was overlooking Dustin and like, let me get, let me get through this so I can work on other things. Right. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't saying it thinking that it would take away what what Dustin did, but I just meant we saw a very different Connor, and I wonder if when they fight again, that will be switched up a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. You don't know. Okay. I don't know. I, I, I think I think that uh, you know Connor will take this fight way more serious than he took the last one. Okay. Speaking on Below the Belt podcast, Schaub weighed in on the legal knee controversy in Peter Jan versus Aljamain Sterling fight at UFC 259. Check out what he said. This was like a world star hip hop fight. It was a savage knee. How many fights you have, Peter? You you know the rules, dude. I, I know online the cool thing to do is gang up on Aljamain Sterling and go, oh, the Oscar goes to best winning actor. Oh, oh. Who are you to say that a knee to the f-ing face didn't hurt him? A knee to the face? You ever seen someone get knee to the face and it should be cool? Guys definitely can cuss. You cannot have the fight go on. So all this unnecessary hate you're throwing Al Jermaine's way because you didn't see the signs that you wanted to see in need to the f-ing face is insane. You guys got to back off, man. And it would be such a black eye on the sport if Al Jermaine was allowed to continue that fight. 